Hello everyone and welcome or welcome back to my channel for another vital tutorial. In this video I'm going to talk about FM synthesis. I mean I'm going to talk more about FM synthesis and in particular about some techniques and ideas which are peculiar to vital and not so common in other synths and I think really offer a bunch of uh, add a bunch of possibilities to your sound design palette that uh, well I think it's definitely worth talking about. So let's get going. So here we are with Vital, it's friendly and uh, lovely interface. And before I get going, let me make a little disclaimer. I put the advanced word in the title of this video, which means uh, I will take for granted that you have a, a clue about what FM synthesis or phase modulation synthesis is. So I will not go get into explaining every little detail about it. Uh, if you if you're not on board with this, there's some videos by me and some others by lots of wonderful YouTubers that can help you understand the basics about it. Now this out of the way, let's get going. Here we have a simple sine wave. It's basically an initialized patch. There's only one oscillator and uh, it's, I've set the phase randomization to zero and turned it from a saw wave to a sine wave. And uh, I could be modulating it with, uh, be doing FM with from any of the other oscillators, which is already quite interesting. It's definitely not an exclusive of Vital. I mean, this is something you could do with Serum, with Faceplant, even with Zebra, though it's over 10 years ago, and even with Ableton Wavetable. Now, uh, this, as you probably know, allows for lots of noise, lots of noise. I mean, you can easily end up uh, having your you know, having a complex wavetable modulating another complex wavetable makes go, gets things out of control in no time. But uh, but you know, choosing your wavetables with wisdom and care uh, can make things more interesting. Let's say, for example, this harmonic series, which basically just contains sine waves. If I give a like, get a little bit of FM, or maybe get some uh, envelope controlled FM to it, and then what will happen? This is a little too much, right? But this, you see, it. it's like having a multiple ratio uh, FM operator, and I could do different things with it, such as maybe you know getting some unison and uh, having them be spread on the harmonic series uh, from the advanced menu. I mean, that's there's a lot of possibilities you can get out of this. Uh, but uh, this is, you know, just just a simple idea. It's uh, it's and it's in a way exclusive. You can create a wavetable like this in many other synths and have definitely a lot of fun. Now, uh, getting back on track here, the main thing I want to talk about is key tracked LFOs and key tracked random generators. Key tracked LFOs are one of the most interesting features of this synth. I can use an LFO here, which is key tracked. So this LFO is going at audio rate, and in this case, specifically one octave below my fundamental. You see, it's minus 12 semitones. I can get it and use it to modulate the phase of my oscillator. And now I will have this, this noisy thing of being a wave, a, a sawtooth wave modulating a sine wave. But then, say, let me remove this thing. Maybe I want, you see this is happening, but I want this to be modulated by an envelope. And more importantly, I want this oscillator one phase to not be modulated by a saw wave. So I will not change the shape of my LFO, but go and change the mod, mod, mod remapping. So in here from, on the factory, I just make it into a sine wave. And so now I just have a, a 
subharmonic modulator. It's like having an operator at the 0.5 ratio in you know normal FM jargon. And this, you know, it's kind of classic. If I make it a little more, a little snappier, going here on my envelope. Uh, See, I can go here on the mod remapping and keep one envelope linear, but change the, the, the remapping. Why am I doing this? Well, because f maybe, you know, if I'm trying to make, say, a blocked, so blocked FM sound, I might want to have different envelopes controlling my different amounts, amount of modulation from several modulators, which I can do with a single envelope. Say I get, again, LFO1, where are you here? LFO1 modulating oscillator one phase, and then I say this one, I want it to be a different amount of sine wave, let's say eight. No, I want more, more than eight. Let's say, four. let's say 14. This is a lot. Okay, and make it bipolar too. So I get envelope two again, controlling the amount of this. And this is, this is long, you see it ends. But if I make it shorter, they, you see, there are now two FM operators, and one is modulating. Uh, um, one one has a 0 0.5 ratio. The other, this other one has a, actually a seven ratio because it would be 14, but it's actually seven because it's one octave below. I could send it to so that it's like one and 14. It gets a lot brighter. Now I could get it to be decide how much of this I want. Or even, you know, this, this is definitely not anything advanced or surprising, make it velocity sensitive so that. And I could do the same thing with other envelope envelope amounts like this one and maybe make the, the whole sound velocity sensitive. And this would would allow for a bunch of interesting possibilities, say. You get a playable, kind of playable uh, EP like sound, though this was slightly clipping. Now, uh, if you are into somehow saving your computation power, instead of controlling uh, uh, oscillator one phase with um, with, an LF, with another LFO, you could just say, no, I want this envelope two, not to modulate my modulation three amount, but say modulation two, which is this LFO one, modulation, say mod matrix, uh, modulation two power. What is it? It's this thing here. Uh, th this, you see, if I move it, it creates a curve. You know, it changes the way the modulation is affecting the parameter from being linear to being concave or com com convex, and I can change how much, uh, um, how concave or how convex it is. And you see now this, this creates, This also creates higher harmonics in my modulator. So now I'm only making a, a simple two operator patch. You know, I have a sine wave carrier being modulated by a, a sine wave modulator, which is at the same frequency, but I'm changing the I'm changing the way this carry this modulator is is modulating the carrier so that it's linear um in time the, um, the the curve of this modulation changes so it's like being like I'm like if I were squeezing or delating my sine wave uh, with with an envelope and that of course makes more higher harmonics appear which which in my opinion is awesome now I'm doing this with uh, with my I'm doing this with uh, uh, with an envelope. I could do this with other controls. Say, I'm not saying, let me go back for to this envelope to controlling modulation three amount so that I'm back to my previous patch. But say I want my mod wheel to control uh, the power of this modulation and even say the power of the other one, the other thing controlled by LFO1.
I get a whole lot of sounds by changing this thing and say I could go and see if I go positively or negatively. The results are quite different, are dramatically different and the amount of... There's quite a lot of possibilities and uh, well, you know, you have these amazing LFOs with all those possible remapping modulation, possible remapping possibilities and all of that. And this allows, you know, for in sequences or pads or whatever you're doing, it allows for quite a lot of variety out of a single simple sine wave, which is one of the things you've been hearing in the, in the beginning of this video. Now, another thing you can do is, uh, well, remembering that uh, every parameter here is stereo and even mo every modulation can be stereo. So I could have my LFOs modulating my, uh, my, so my, my oscillator phase, be, do it in a stereophonically opposite direction. And, and you can see here, I mean, if you're here listening to this through a, any stereo system, that this thing already has gotten a lot more width. Uh, if we want more width, uh, one thing, you know, if we were doing it with another oscillator, it would be easy to add some unison and have it uh, wider. While if I get some unison here, it won't be great because uh, you see, it's just two sine waves and especially in the end, it's gonna get to be, you know, it's kind of have this sort of, um, it's gonna be not really too predictable as far as volume goes. And maybe I don't want to use unison. What I can do here is adding some stereo modulation to the pitch because it, well, it's a frequency and it's also a pitch in this case to the pitch of my um, key track LFO. And if I make this to be bipolar, for obvious reasons and then kind of small see now from this to at zero you have but, you know we create this sort of detuning effect which is uh, which adds you know color and depth to the sound which i find quite interesting i could get more stereo effects by just making just this way controlling this though at this point it would be, it would barely be noticeable especially if you do it in a static way now um what else can we do now? A lot of things really. Ah, yeah, we can go and check out our random generators. Now, uh, here we, we can, we, we can do FM from the sampler, which of course allows us to have noise becoming an FM source or actually anything. I mean, you could use any piece of audio we recorded, anything. But um, another one thing, and you can actually even have it be following your, your giving key track because you know you, you can make your sampler key track but but beyond this you can have your random generators also be uh, key tracked so uh, this is I wouldn't say it's complicated because it's it really isn't that complicated but say I mean this one I'm gonna control the the phase again and make it bipolar and make it stereo from here so that it's actually two random generators see this gets into becoming there is this no noise component and by itself it sounds horrible and you can make it sound more horrible if you go for sample and all but it's a way of making this kind of horrible sound and uh, in the right context uh, they make uh, they make some sense if not plenty of sense uh, and if with a little with a little bit of detail uh, of reverb and ambience uh, these all go up for other possibilities and yeah of course you can use it to control at audio rate any other parameter which is which is also a possibility and you can also again go and control the power of this which makes it more you know more more amount no even noisier while it already is quite noisier quite noisy you could actually go even and modulate other things with it such as the lfo1 frequency or actually let's go just for the tune because if i go for the frequency it would go totally crazy but this <coughs> this would uh, 
It's barely hearable. I'll have to go to transpose and this would... It goes completely crazy and if I make this envelope a little longer. It turns the sound into this complete, complete noisy mess, which is... I mean, it really could be what you're up to. Why not? Why not making this noisy messes and for your own things? And I mean, you know, just this with just a little bit, just with a little bit, just a little bit of reverb and delay it gave it, uh, you know, a whole different, you know, it just places it somewhere, and it all of a sudden starts making more sense. So uh, I hope you're satisfied because I'm, I wouldn't say I'm out of things to talk about. I could be making countless examples, but this are this, you know, where the ideas, which I don't know if you knew already, if you did, I'm sorry for wasting your time. But if you didn't, I hope you found them interesting and you will make use of them in your own sound design. Let me know. Uh, really, seriously, let me know in the in the comments section below. You let me know what you what you think about this and what you can do out of it. Also, now that you're there, you can also go down here and click subscribe, which would definitely make me very happy if you think you learned something out of this video. Uh, you know, I recently went through the critical 600 followers mark, and I want to keep going. And so, yeah, help me out. Then there are other links in the description. There's links to Deep Tons Production I'm working with. We offer a bunch of audio related services, including one on one mentoring. And then there is uh, my Gumroad, where you can find a lot of patches for Vital and for other synths as well, quite soon. I keep saying quite soon, but it's really going to happen, I swear. And then uh, if you're also wondering what kind of music I make and what else do I do beyond talking to a camera, you can check out some links to my music, which are just at the end of the description. All this said, thank you for your attention. Thank you for staying with me this long and see you at my next video. Bye.